Hi there, welcome to TNT. We are in your book, Discovery of Grace. We are in section 2.7, and this week we are talking about God's good news to the world. What do you think the best news was that you've ever gotten, or maybe just some good news? Maybe you're, you found out you were going on vacation. That's pretty good news. Maybe you found out you were going to have a little brother or sister. That's fun news. Maybe um, you found out that the teacher you had this year, you were going to have this year, was the best teacher in the school. You were so excited to get this teacher. Whatever it was, we all have good news that we get. We all have bad news we get. But today we're just going to talk about the good. And the best news you're ever going to get is the news about Jesus. God's Word, His entire Bible, tells us about who He is, how we can have a relationship with Him, and it tells us about Jesus and how Jesus died on the cross for our sins. And don't you think, if you had good news, you'd want to share it with somebody, right? I imagine that when you found out you were going to go on vacation, you wanted to tell everybody in your class, or everybody at church, or everybody in your family, that didn't live in your house. Maybe when you found out who your teacher was, as soon as you saw your friends that also went to your school, you tried to find out if they were having that teacher too. When we have good news, we wanna share it. We want other people to be a part of it and enjoy it and, and just be happy for us. And that's what God wants us to do with his good news. Let's read your verse for this week. Matthew 28, 19 and 20. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. After Jesus died on the cross and rose again, he spent time with his disciples. And these are some of the last words we hear from Jesus um, written in God's word. These are some of the last words. And in them, it tells, Jesus is telling his followers, this is what I want you to do. This is who I want you to be about. This is, this is it. This is the good news. This is what I want you to do with your lives. He wanted them to go and make disciples. Now that sounds very stuffy, very, I don't know hard, very, I don't know what, but really all it is, is telling people about Jesus and helping them become more like Jesus. Making disciples means sharing the good news that Jesus came to earth, died on the cross, rose again. He paid for our punishment for our sins on the cross. And if we accept Jesus as our savior, we get to spend eternity with him. We get to have a relationship with him here on earth and then also in heaven one day. And then when we do, we're supposed to tell other people about Jesus. And, and Jesus promised, this is the cool part, that he was going to be with us. It says in there, I am with you always to the end of the age. We don't have to do this on our own. We can have other people, but we have Jesus with us. And that's so amazing. That's so amazing. So how do we share God's news with other people? One way is we can just tell them about how we believed in Jesus. Maybe how you heard about God. Maybe why you love God. Maybe why you're thankful that you're going to heaven one day. You just tell people your story. That's sharing the good news. But I'm going to give you a little tool. So what I want you to do is you're going to need four sticky notes. If you need to pause the video, pause the video. You're going to need four sticky notes because I have a project. Okay, do you have your four sticky notes? This is what you're going to do. See, there's the sticky sides down here and the not sticky side is up here at the top, right? You're going to be writing on the top part of your sticky notes. This is what it's going to look like. You're going to write the number one on one the number two on another, number three on another, and four on another. If you're not sure what you're doing, you can watch, I, do it after I show you, okay? So this is what you're going to do. You're going to mark in your Bible verses that you can use to tell other people the good news of Jesus. God wants us to do it, but again, he doesn't want us to do it on our own. He wants to do it with us. And one way he can do it with us is by us actually reading verses from the Bible. So the first one you're going to do 
is Romans 3.23. So I put the sticky note there, but then I also highlighted the actual verse so that when I go to the sticky note one, I know exactly what verse I want to read. And the verse I want to read is Romans 3.23. So let's read it. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Why is this verse important for us to tell people? When we're telling them good news, why do we need to tell them they're sinners? Well, if they, we're going to give them good news, why is it so good? It's good because when we're born, we're sinners. We need a Savior. We all have sinned. It says there, we all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. If we don't think we're sinners, then why do we need to be saved? Why do we need to even know the good news? So that's the first verse. The second verse I want you to do is Romans 6, 23. So again, number two, and then I have it highlighted down there at the bottom. Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Why is this verse important for us to tell our friends when we're sharing the good news of Jesus? Well, because we all are sinners. We just learned that in the first verse. But what does that mean for us? Well, it means that the wages of sin is death. That means separation from God for forever, eternal death. But the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. That's the good news. We deserve eternal death, but God offers us eternal life. And that's awesome, awesome news. So we have that one now. It may be just on one page over, but we're going to go to Romans 5, 8, again, number three, and it's highlighted there so I can, I can look at it really easily. It says in Romans 5, 8, but God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. That's pretty amazing. God showed his love for us while we were still sinners, before we were even born. Christ died for us. Jesus died on the cross for our sins. That's so amazing. Another verse that talks about that is John 3, 16. You probably know that one. For God so loved the world that he sent his only son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. That's amazing. God loved us so much that he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for our sins. Now, the good news is that we know Jesus didn't stay dead, right? Because Jesus is God, he rose again. And that's that's the best part of the news. Because he's God, he died on the cross for our sins. The next one we're going to look at is uh, Romans 10, verses 9 and 10. You could just do 9, but we're going to do 9 and 10. So again, number 4, highlighted, Romans 10, 9 and 10. This is what it says. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. If we admit that we're sinners, if we say that we believe Jesus died on the cross and rose again to take the punishment for our sin, we're going to be saved. It's simple. Acts 16.31 says that, that a jailer, someone was asking Paul and Silas, how, do I, how, how can I be saved? He wanted to know the good news. Paul and Silas said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. It's so simple. All we have to do is believe that Jesus died on the cross for us and choose to trust him as our savior. We do that when we are... Um, we're sorry for our sin. We know that we've sinned against God, so we know that we need a Savior. Once we accept Jesus as our Savior, in John, um, Jesus talks about the fact that he's He's going to pre He's preparing a place for us right now. He is making heaven ready for us right now, and he wants us to be with him, and we get to be with him one day. And that's pretty awesome. So now you have some verses, Romans 3.23, Romans 6.23, Romans 5, 8, and Romans 10, 9, and 10, or just 9, either one. You've got some verses you can use. Put the sticky notes in your Bible so that you can share those verses with your friends. Now, here's what I want you to do. 
If you're in a group, I want you to pause the video and I want you to practice if you can. Or you can do it later in small group time or whatever your leaders say. But I want you to practice it. If you're watching this at home, get your Bible out. Do it with your parents. Do it with your sister, your brother, somebody. Talk with them about it. Number one, I'm going to review them one more time. Number one is Romans 3.23. Number two is Romans 6.23. Number three is Romans 5.8. And number four is Romans 10, 9, and 10. Now, there are so many more ways that you can share the good news about Jesus. But this is just one way, one tool that you can use. You can mark the verses in your Bible and have it forever there for you to use when you're not sure what to say. You can use those verses. I want you to think about, now after you practice, I want you to think about someone you know that you could share the good news of Jesus with. Maybe you use the verses like this. Maybe you just talk to them about how you love God and you want them to know God. Maybe you invite them to church. Maybe you invite them to Awana. Jesus, when Jesus was saying to his disciples, go and make disciples, he wasn't just saying that to them. He's saying that to us too. He's saying that to anybody who has ever accepted him as their savior. It's our job to share the good news of him with other people. And that's what I want you to do this week. Find somebody you can share the good news of Jesus with. Let's pray. God, I thank you for the best news that we will ever get, that you died on the cross for our sins, that you rose again, that you um, are offering us eternal life, God. Lord, I pray for every single person that's watching this video, that you would um, help them if they haven't accepted you. I pray that you help them to, um, to know what to do. I help, pray that you help them to have the courage to talk to a leader or a parent or a friend. Help them to believe in you. And God, I pray for those who have trusted you as their Savior, that you would give all of us, including me, the courage to tell other people about you, the courage to share your good news with other people. God, we love you. We thank you so much again for giving us eternal life. Um, and all we have to do is accept it. We love you. In your name we pray. Amen. All right. See you next time.